Gucci's out. Yeah. Um, did you know that he was going to get released when he got released? I knew maybe two, three weeks before. Like he let me know that he was going to be out. So. Okay. Were you in contact with him the whole time? Uh, you know, we was on and off. You know, it'd be sometimes I might talk to him two times out the week. Then other times I'm, I might go, you know, almost a month without talking to him. You know. Okay. Now, the biggest thing that people freaked out at, you know, when he got released was how much skinnier he got. Mm -hmm. now, why do you think he got skinny? You know, he's been locked up for three years, so, you know. And, you know, Gucci is always, I think, thinking for it. So he probably was thinking the whole time, how can I come out and kind of shock the people, you know, make the attention be on me. And, you know, he came out, you know, all the way in shape. So. Yeah, no, I mean, he, he looks great. I mean, yeah, he definitely, did. when he went in, he had the pot belly yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, looked unhealthy. And I guess, you know, drugs had a lot to do with that also. Yeah. Okay. So you had mentioned in another interview that Gucci wrote like a thousand songs mm -hmm. while he was locked up. Yeah. Okay. Can you talk about that? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, I think that's how Gucci is every time he, he goes away. You know, that's what keeps him occupied. That's what he loved to do. So, you know, he sit and write songs. He'll call me and rap me the song. A lot of times I'll make a beat, you know, according to what he's writing. He'll rap it to me on tempo over the phone. Or he'll like say, hang up, I'm going to call right back and I'm going to leave you a voicemail with me rapping on it, you know, so I can make a beat to it. So, you know, that's what he does when, when he's on lockdown. Oh, th that's dope. So you're actually kind of doing the pre-recording process yeah. while he was still in prison. Exactly. Okay, so he would actually rap on a voicemail. Mm -hmm. You would take the voicemail, track it to a beat, mm -hmm. and have a rough version of the song. Already. We've been doing that for years, ever since we, you know, the first time he'd been locked up. So, Okay, so how many of the songs that are on his new album were actually recorded in that fashion? Uh, well, the, none of the new songs were, because he'll come, you know, some, he'll be random. Sometimes he'll rap some stuff to me. And, uh, you know, it'd be just something that I guess that's how he was feeling that time. And at that time, he wanted to impress me and, and make me smile. So, but none of those songs were the, the songs that, you know, that was on the album. Okay, on Everybody's Looking. Yeah. Okay. So, Gucci gets out. And he jumps in the studio right away. Yep. Okay. How long after he gets out were you guys in the studio together? Well, I was supposed to be there with him the day he got out. But I had to be in California. I had to be in the Bay Area that same day. So it was that following Monday is when we got in the studio together. So, you know, but he had already recorded, you know, some songs to some beats I gave him, you know, that I made for him before I even got back. So. Okay. So what was that first session like between you two? Because you know, you, you're basically Gucci's main producer. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, you know, it's like, I, I think since we have been through this, you know, more than once, it's just the, it was the same thing. We were happy to see each other. We're gonna laugh. We're gonna hug, and you know what I mean. Then it's gonna be really straight, straight down to the music. Like Zay, oh, you need to hear what I just did to the beat that you sent me. Why, you know, why, why you was gone? And you know, then he playing music for me. Then we might crank up some new music. And it's you know, and and that's just pretty much how it goes. Now, what's really the process like? Do you always do the beat by yourself, or do you and Gucci kind of sit down and start crafting it together? Uh, when it's me and Gucci, it's you know I just sit down and do the beat. I might it might take me five, no more than ten minutes, to just come up with something real fast. Cause this is the way Gucci likes to work. You know what I mean? Like you can if you spend too much time on working on the beat, then he might lose his vibe, and then he don't even want to do the song no more. So you know I think that's how we got so much work done and so much music done is cause we both like to work fast. I don't like to spend a lot of time on nothing either. So, hmm. I mean that actually reminds me of what people told me about Tupac. Yeah, exactly. We don't have the luxury of sitting there taking all day on one song when people want to hear so much material from us. Yeah, I mean, I heard that the Tupac would actually fire uh, producers that would take too long exactly. on working on beats. And like, I think it was uh, Snoop. I think Snoop was saying how what he learned from Tupac was, you know, before, you know, when he's working with Dre and everything else like that, they would create the song 
and then they would sit there and kind of you know do a rough mix and listen to it over again and, and start fucking with it. Whereas yeah. like Tupac's like, no, fuck that. Like yeah. this song is done. Yeah, let's go to the next, next one. one. Like like we could we could mix it later. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. We could mix and master it some later day. Yeah. Like we got to get more songs out. Exactly, and that's how we work. Okay, so so Gucci kind of has a Tupac work ethic when it comes exactly. to the studio. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at the amount of work that Tupac had and the amount of work that and Gucci, Gucci had, had, it shows. Yeah, I mean, people don't like to compare anyone to Tupac, but you know, when you look at just the, the actual workflow, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same way. Yeah. Now, now the big difference when when Gucci came out was he wasn't on drugs. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, he talked about even in, in his interviews recently that he was always high before. Yeah. So when you look at working with intoxicated Gucci versus sober Gucci, what's the big difference? Um, well, you know, I've been working with Gucci from the beginning. So at the beginning, he wasn't intoxicated all the time. You know, to me, it's like the way we working now is back how we was working when we first started. Gucci wasn't, you know, Gucci wasn't really intoxicated like that when we first started working. So this reminded me of that same guy. The only difference is, is when Gucci's intoxicated, is you're gonna get some of the more, you're gonna get more records that, you know, it probably doesn't make any sense, but they still feel good. It's gonna be something special about it. Like, I don't know why he's saying what he's saying, but it just sound good and it feel good. So. Like for example, did you produce pills? Yeah, I did pills, yep. Okay, that's actually my favorite Gucci song. Yeah, and that's and you can tell, you know, the influence, you know, on the song. That was Gucci high when he made pills? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was. He was. He was <laughs> okay. turned up. He was just like, Zay, hey, listen to this. Oh, we got to do this. You know, he was just moving fast and talking fast. So, and I think that's, if you listen to his voice text on there, the things he's saying is just like, you can tell he's in a, he, he's in an out, outer body experience at that point. I mean, you know, it's, I always say this, like, even in my business, some of the, the most interesting things that I've ever done have come by accident. Exactly. Where it's like, I wasn't planning on doing this, but something went wrong, and it's like, oh, shit, that worked. It worked. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's roll with it. Now, now what's it like, because cause you, you know, we talked about this last time, you don't smoke, mm -hmm. you don't drink, mm -hmm. and you don't do any drugs. No. I don't, you haven't even heard me use... Uh, Foul language, so. You don't use profanity. No, I don't even use profanity, so. Okay. So, so, so how is it, you know, because you don't seem like a hands-off producer. Mm-hmm. I'm a hands-on. You're hands-on? Yeah. You know, you're, you're crafting, you know, you don't just send the beat over and then, you know, they send it back and that's yeah. it. Like, you're, you're hands-on in the studio. Yeah. Now, how is it crafting songs, for example, when, when you, like, okay, you know something, you should say this instead, but you can't really use profanity yeah. in the process. Like, yeah. like how, how does that, how does that, Chemistry work. Uh, I like if you say, for instance, like with a Gucci. I mean, when I say I don't use profanity, that means I, you know, I, that's just not my my language. I don't really, you know, talk like that. But if I'm trying to get a point across or trying to tell him what I'm trying to, you know, get him to say or something like that, you know, I say what I need to say. So, but working with these guys, they kind of get it. Like when when somebody knows me so well, such as like a Gucci. He's no, he know the point I'm trying to get across or what I'm trying to say, when I'm trying to say it, without me getting out of character, you know. And I always trust his instinct, like, you know. A lot of times with guys like that, you don't got to say much. You just got to give them the beat, you know, the beat that they need, and they know what to do with it. You know, they just want you to be there to verify that they're going in the right direction. Do you ever ask them to change certain lyrics around or put in suggestions like that? No, sometimes it can be a word, you know, a word or a phrase or two that I think that, ooh, this might sound better right there. And, you know, sometimes he'll be like, oh, Zay, that's right, that's, you know, that's perfect. Or I might try to give him a rap per pattern, and he'll be like, ooh, this is perfect for this. You know, but other than that, and then sometimes he'll be like, you know, he want to keep it how he got it. So. Okay. So I heard that his new album was done in four days. Mm-hmm. Four days from beginning to end. And it was like, how many songs? Uh, how many songs? The song has what, about 14 tracks? And uh, I mean, I'm looking at the, the track listing right now, you know, the producer credits. Mm -hmm. I mean, Drummer Boy did All My Children. Uh huh. But it's really you and Mike Will. Yeah. Okay. 
So, you and Mike Will worked together on uh, Motherfucking Right by 2 Chains yeah. and, uh, yeah. and Lil Wayne? Yeah. Or, uh, is, was Lil Wayne on that song? Yeah, yeah, he was on the song. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, you guys worked together. Was that the first time you and Mike Will worked together? Yeah, as far as producing a beat. The, well, no, we did something before. We did something bef- before with Gucci on his, uh, it was a project he put out. It was like three albums in one. And it was like, one of them was like Lean, Pills, and something else. It was on that project. So we did a beat together before, but we haven't really just worked with each other like that. So why did you guys decide to sort of split the, you know, collaborate and split the, the production duties on this album? Because that's how Gucci wanted it, you know. Gucci wanted, you know, Mike Will to be a big part of the project, and he wanted me to be a big part of the project. And then he had, he said that he heard the Two Chains and Lil Wayne record, like, man, that's the hardest beat in the world to me. I want that, like, that's the sound I'm, you know, I'm going for. So, you know, me and Mike Will started just cooking up beats together, because we know Gucci coming home soon, so we wanted to have, you know, the beats ready for him when he got home. Okay, so like, how many of the beats that you guys did ended up being used on that album? Uh, we did all of them except uh, uh, at least the M. At least the M we did at his house while he was there. We just cooked it up on spot and we recorded it and it made the album. But the rest of the beats that we did uh, together on the album, we already had them ready for him, you know, by the time he touched down. That's dope. I mean, for, for example, you know, Way Back, that, that's my favorite yeah, song. Yeah, Way album. Back, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, you know, we, we, we was in the studio just cooking up beats, you know, and it turned into, you know, us just having fun to like, hold on, these are Gucci beats for his album. We got to tuck these and put these away. Okay. Now, now what's it like having two producers work together? You know, because you're used to working by yourself, mm-hmm. usually, and Mike, Mike Will, well, I, I don't really know Mike Will's style, but, uh-huh. you know, how, how does it work when two guys are sitting there programming drums, doing keyboards together? Uh, it's actually fun, man. It's, it, it gives me, you know, another, another outlook on the tracks that I make, you know, cause I've, I've been making so many tracks by myself for so long that, you know, I, I know what they're going to sound like, you know, when I'm done with them. When you add another guy in, like, you know, you see how I've been collaborated with like Metro Boomin, a few other producers at times. I don't know exactly what it's going to sound like, you know, when we're done. So, you know, it's kind of exciting for me to even to hear what it's going, you know, the finished product. So, you know, I love doing it. Now, at first I was like, man, I don't want to really produce with nobody. I just want to do my own thing, you know, because I'm competitive. I want to just, you know, I really want to just go harder than you. <laughs> and then, you know, I like my beats harder than yours. But then, you know, us collaborating, it just made me find a whole new respect for, for it because it just make my beats that I'm, you know, I'm used to doing sound totally different than what I thought they was going to be. I mean, you know, the, the beats were... were were great. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to have to say that's probably sonically, I think, Gucci's best album. Yeah, I think Overall, so. Overall, like, I it, think there, so. there were songs, like, for example, like, I like Pills better than, yeah. you know, yeah. any of the songs on this album just because Pills is my favorite Gucci song. Yeah. But I think overall, when I listen to other, you know, Gucci projects, this seems to be the most consistent musically. And I think it's because, you know, on all the other albums, more so it's a lot of different producers you know, on there. Like this one, it has a sound to it. You know, it actually has a sound to it. And that's because I think me and Mike Will just did the whole project, so. Yeah, uh, how did it feel when you heard that one line, uh, I'd rather rap a Zay track Listen, than a Dre track? He told, he warned me before he played the song, because that was one of the songs he did uh, before I seen him. You know, I was in California and he was just, when I came in the house, and he wanted to play some of the songs he got for the album. He was like, Zay, you finna fall out when you hear this song. So when I heard it, it just made me smile and jump around like, oh, my boy Gucci, he didn't took it back for me, so. What do you think about the whole situation? Man, my point of view, man, I really feel like they tried to paint a, a bad picture on my brother and tried to make him look like, like he was a hater. Uh, it was some envy, jealousy type shit, you know what I'm saying? And actuality, you know what I'm saying? Bro been having this shit, man. He been in the condo. I got my hat on and I had my Coke bottles up under my hat. And I'm sitting at the dinner table like an asshole with the hat on, knowing she gonna tell me to take it off. And I'm just sitting there just gawping down, you know, in my zone. She said, take that goddamn hat off at the dinner table. I'm like, come on, mom. Coke everywhere. 